In the late 1890s, a discovery in the remote Klondike region of Canada sparked a frenzy that would change the lives of thousands. It all started when three men stumbled upon gold in a tributary of the Klondike River. Little did they know that their find would ignite one of the most epic gold rushes in history. Over 100,000 people from all walks of life were lured by the promise of striking it rich, leaving behind their homes and embarking on a treacherous journey through icy valleys and rocky terrain. While most of these prospectors didn't find the fortune they were seeking, their arrival in Alaska and Yukon transformed the region forever. More than 50 gold mining camps were established, some of which grew into major towns like Nome and Fairbanks. The discovery of gold in the Klondike can be attributed to a group of individuals, including George Carmack, his taggish wife Kate Carmack, her brother Skookum Jim, and their nephew Dawson Charlie. They were traveling south of the Klondike River when they decided to search for gold on Bonanza Creek. It still debated who actually discovered the gold, but George Carmack was recognized as the official discoverer. The news of their find spread like wildfire, and soon miners flocked to Bonanza Creek to stake their claims. But the real gold rush began in 1897 when the first prospectors returned from the Klondike with large amounts of gold. The press reported that over a million dollars worth of gold had been brought in, sparking a migration of prospectors, outfitters, writers, and photographers. To reach the gold fields, prospectors had to navigate treacherous routes through Dai and Skagway in southeast Alaska. They faced the daunting task of carrying a year's supply of food, weighing close to a ton, through mountainous terrain in a harsh climate. Despite the challenges, thousands of prospectors made their way to Dawson City, the heart of the Klondike Gold Rush. The population exploded from 500 to approximately 30,000 people in just two years. But life in Dawson City was far from glamorous. The town was built of wood, isolated, and unsanitary. Fires, high prices, and epidemics plagued the residents. However, the wealthiest prospectors indulged in gambling and drinking, spending their newfound wealth in the saloons. While the Klondikers sought their fortune, the indigenous Han people suffered. They were forcibly moved to make way for the gold rush, resulting in many deaths. Of the thousands who arrived in Dawson City, only a fraction became successful prospectors. The best creeks had already been claimed, and newcomers had to venture further to find their own claims. Mining in the Klondike required clearing the ground of vegetation and debris. Prospect holes were dug to find the ore, and if productive, proper digging would commence down to the bedrock. The subarctic climate posed a challenge, with a layer of hard permafrost just below the surface. Miners used wood fires to soften the ground, repeating the process until they reached the gold. Water was used in the summer to separate the gold from gravel. Despite the hardships, gold mining in the Klondike continued on and off. Today, the legacy of the gold rush attracts tourists to the region and contributes to its prosperity. Join us as we explore the stunning photos that capture the essence of the Klondike gold rush, a defining moment in history that forever changed the landscape and the lives of those who sought their fortune in the frozen north.